Hi, I'm Peter Reinhardt, and this is Pizza Talk, presented by Pizza Quest. And today I'm with, I have to say, at the legendary Paul E. G. And I say legendary, and I kind of chuckle because you have become a legend in the pizza world in a very short amount of time. In a way, you're kind of a newbie compared to a lot of the, the, the old-time pizza guys, and yet it feels like you've been around forever. And and you have become sort of legendary, and I we got to figure out why. How did you do that? How did you achieve such such legendary status in such a short amount of time? Well, first of all, it's ten years now, believe it or not, that, that we've been open. Yeah. Not short anymore. But I just I don't know. I think you know people like what I was doing, and you know I was you know I wasn't uh, I was humble. I tried to be humble, and um, you know I I, I was a um, social media guerrilla marketeer extraordinaire, okay? <laughs> right, um, right. Well, you came into it kind of, you know, a, in a different way than a lot of other people came into the pizza world. Uh, and that's why I, I say it's so recent and new because you didn't start out as a pizza guy. In fact, by the way, first of all, you know, you're talking to us from where? From, you're in Brooklyn now? Or I'm in Brooklyn. I'm sitting right here in Greenpoint. In Greenpoint, where it all began for at the first Poly G's. Uh, and, of course, a lot of people who already know you, but there are many people who are watching this who maybe don't know you or don't know your backstory or didn't read the interview that you and I did a couple of years ago on Pizza Quest. So maybe we should catch everybody up a little bit. Uh, you came into this through, what, through IT, through the IT world, right? I was, I was, in, the, I was in the IT world for 30 years. It was a career I chose uh, just because I thought it was the future. Uh, I thought maybe I was geeky, but it turns out I wasn't geeky at all. Uh, and I tried to rise up through the corporate ladders and, you know, not, not, not only women have a glass ceiling, okay? Guys who are, are not geeks that try to go, you know, to the top of the geek world uh, have a glass ceiling. Well, you were right that it, it was the future, but it just wasn't your future. Exactly. But I didn't know that, and, you know, it, and over the years, I mean, I, I, I fought very hard to, to do well as I could to help support my family and, um, you know, pay the bills that, that were accumulating. But uh, it, it's sort of like, you know, if you ever watched anybody who wanted to be a drummer play drums, but, but they didn't have that talent, it, very, it was very painful. Well, in my case, you know, that's the way it was. But um, in the back of my mind, it was, I always knew I wanted to do something else. It took a long time for me to get there. But, um, it, it, you know, people, I would have people to my house, love to cook. Love to entertain, not just cook, play music for people, uh, yeah. have great conversations. And, you know, when they would come over, I'd find excuses for them to come, right? And when they did, they'd always encourage me, oh, you should open up a restaurant. And that was the last thing I wanted to do. Yeah. You, know? Uh, you know, I was doing this for like, say, 10 people, right? I couldn't imagine doing it for 100 or whatever. Uh, but eventually I had to do something because, I, you know, I wasn't getting where I wanted to get. And I didn't feel like I was being a good example for my children. Uh, and along the way, one of the things I chose to do, I thought that, that, that this could get me out of my rut. I, I be, my wife and I became uh, Amway distributors, multi-level marketing distributors. Uh -huh. And it, I, I learned some things from that that um, were very important. Uh, I learned that I wanted to have my own business. When you're working for somebody else, you're working for somebody else's dreams, yeah. right? And so that seed was planted and I, I wanted to do that and i learned a lot of other things about setting goals and um eventually it just i went out i became a consultant um september uh, uh, the end of august 2001 uh, i left my 18-year career with at&t affiliated companies and started drawing a modest pension i offered an early out i said this looks like a good deal i you know everywhere you look you see people leaving the company coming back a week later sitting at the same desk doing the same thing, but have, with, with a badge that didn't have AT&T on it, right? I said, oh, I'm gonna do this. So, you know, I didn't think about me having to compete with other people who were, again, geekier than me, who, who you know, who would do better. And it became a struggle. I did it for 10 years. And uh, eventually I had a guy come to me, uh, you know, this was after the Amway thing, while I was still doing that. And he had this idea to uh, have me open up a restaurant for him. Uh, it would be mine. He, it was a place called La Peep. It's a franchise that's mostly oh, yeah. like uh, a breakfast, a breakfast, yeah, breakfast and lunch. And yeah, I, I kind of like the idea. 
Yeah. I like the idea, oh, well, you know, I could be home at night with my family. Because that was very important. My social, I'm a social animal, right? So, uh, and I could go on the weekends, the weddings at night, I thought. So um, we started going down that road and um, looking for a place. He said that he would, he gave me this, this beautiful framework. He said that he would, um, you know, he built the place for me. It would be mine. And I would just pay him 5% of the gross. And we started doing that. And, and I wasn't feeling the breakfast and lunch thing. And I really had a love for pizza. You know, all through the 90s, uh, I, I went out on this pizza quest. Excuse me. But I did. That's exactly what I did. Uh, I discovered I went to, we, we used to stop in Trenton. And you know, if anybody knows about the pizza in Trenton, D-Lo's. Lorenzo's, yeah. yeah. We, we, when we go on road trips heading south, we'd stop there. So that was kind of like the, the genesis of my my pizza quest, right? Uh -huh. um, you're not going to sue me now, are you? No, we love hearing this. This is exactly uh, what we pizza quest. We, try, we try to feed that passion. <laughs> All right, good. So, um, but then um, the other the other thing that really set it off for me is I kept on hearing about this place, the Tonos at Coney Island. And, um, and I said, well, well, what is it? You know, for me, up until then, New York pizza was pizza to me. I didn't know about anything else, pretty much, except I started to get a feel for it with Trenton, right? But I said, I got to see what the big deal is. They wrote them up in the time. So I went there, and, and, and it was really very different. I really enjoyed it, right? And, you know, it was, uh, they cooked the pizza with coal, and I got on this kick. I thought, that, well, coal is the secret here. And I started looking for coal oven pizzas, pizzerias to go to. And we started going to other pizzerias. My, my kids would come along. My wife would come along. Friends would come along. And so I was doing all of this. I was this pizza enthusiast. When, uh, and finally, you know, I, I went to a place in Nutley, New Jersey. At the time, it was called Regina Margarita. Um, and somebody sued them. They had to change it to Queen Margarita. But the guy built the Neapolitan oven in his place. It was two brothers, just like Big Night. If you've seen Big uh, Night, it's yeah, the exact yeah. same thing. The guy and his wife were out front. His brother was in the back being the, being the chef. Yeah. Um, but he built this oven. And um, I started getting the idea that maybe I could build an oven. There was another guy. He was running a pizzeria. Him and his brother were running a pizzeria. I'm sorry. Uh, in um, on Carmine Street in the village, a place called Numero 28. Uh, and they had an oven there, a Neapolitan oven. They were making pizza that I really liked. And this guy kind of said, you know, I can make an oven for you. I started thinking that I wanted to do this instead of the breakfast thing. And uh, finally, you know, I, I found out that I could, buy an, I, I could buy an oven for a few thousand dollars, put it in my property, right? Um, because I didn't want to do this as a hobby. I, I wanted to, this was solely so that I could open up a pizzeria. And then I discovered I could go on FornoBravo.com and I get free oven plans and build it for less than a thousand dollars. Hey, we love, we love hearing shout outs to Forno Bravo since they're our friends. And, uh, uh, and I didn't know that that's how you actually got started. The, the interesting thing to me is, is that you kind of went from the, the tomato pie side of pizza with, uh, with the Lorenzo's in, in Trenton, and then kind of back into the New York neo Neapolitan, we call it with the coal fire and everything else, and then somehow ended up with the, the most traditional style of pizza of all, the uh, the Neapolitan wood fire Neapolitan, and that's kind of where you made your mark, right? Yes. What happened was I like the romanticism of a wood fired oven. I like that. I saw that it cooked quickly. I saw that it was a very simple process. So. That's what that's the route I decided to take. And I built that oven and you know I did okay building the oven. Thank God my friend who wanted to open up, you know, the little peep with me was able to help me. He 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 was in construction before he quote unquote retired and he had this passion for masonry. It was very helpful. He was very disappointed that I didn't want to open up the little peep with him. He had far more faith in the peep than he did in me opening up a pizzeria. And I, you know, what are you gonna do? But, but yeah, uh I follow your heart. I, I built the oven, then I, you know, and, and and at first, I was buying dough at a supermarket called Stop and Shop for a buck, I think it was. You get the pizza dough in a little bag, and that's what I would use. I didn't know what I was doing. And finally, I knew, you know, I was making my own fresh mozzarella, and finally, I decided, you know what, I, you know, I'm gonna have to make my own pizza dough here. So I went out. I got this book, this really good book called American Pie. Oh, and I heard of it. That. 
Yeah. In it was a rest, a neo Neapolitan uh, pizza dough recipe. Yeah. And yeah. that's where my pizza um, dough recipe started. Yeah, okay. It's, that's pretty amazing to me to hear that. And it sort of warms my heart to know that I, would, I played this little role in your journey. Not a little role, Peter. Not a little role. And when you came to me at, at the Pizza Expo that year and, and said, you yeah. want to have your picture taken with me? It was bizarre, okay? <laughs> it was beyond surreal. It was just bizarre. Well, and, well and, you know, as a, somebody who started as a pizza enthusiast, I, that's what I am. I'm still just a pizza enthusiast. So I get very enthusiastic when I see people who are doing great work. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you feel that way. But... Um, I, that's how I started. I, I had a, a Pillsbury bread machine is how I made my dough. No kidding. I have that machine it, it, at my restaurant in 60 Greenpoint to this day. Uh, and, and that's how it worked. And, you know, I played around. I did all kinds of different things, changing hydrations, you know, changing fermentation time and you know, all kinds of things. So would you say that from this point on, you were pretty much self-taught? I know that you you connected with a lot of major pizza mentors in your, you know, as you were evolving the restaurant, but, but is, was it pretty much just trial and error for you to, until you came it, up? It with absolutely that? was trial and error. A lot of, you know, I asked a lot of questions to a lot of people in, in the pizza community. I wanted to be like, and they were all, all, of, you know, every single one of them were, were generous with their, you know, with their knowledge and their encouragement. Uh, Mark Iacono, uh, Matthew Palombino, um, Michael Ayub, Fornino. And these, are all New York, these are all sort of part of that New York pizza right. community. Yeah. And, and more than anybody, once I finally decided that, you know, I was going to do this, I, I'm skipping ahead here a little bit, uh, because I, I did pizza tastings for two years, by the way, doing all this. But when it got to the point where I actually was going to open a place, okay, I finally, I, I walked through those walls of fear. And th there's a lot I can tell you about that if you want to hear it about raising the money. Um, I don't know how much time we have, but- We, we can get into that maybe later on, but uh, uh, let, let, I love, the, I love uh, fast forwarding it so that we can, because we want to we wanna hear how you got there, yeah. Well, one, once, once I found a place, you know, I was gonna open up in New Jersey and, and, and you know, long story short, I, 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 found, I figured out a way where I could come to New York even though I was living in New Jersey. And, and operate my pizzeria. And once I decided the oven that I was going to get, uh, somebody told me the the oven the oven rep. I said, "Well, you know, is there somebody I could talk to who's using this oven now? Maybe I give him a call on the phone, whatever, blah blah blah." And I said, "Well, as a matter of fact, there's a place in Hopewell, New Jersey, not far from you, where the oven is actually in operation right now." And I went down there, a place called um, uh, Nomad Pizza, and I met. Uh, Tom Grimm and Stalin Bedin? Stalin Fidel Bedin. I, I, I'm sure his, you know, I don't want to talk politics, but I'm pretty sure his parents were not, you know, conservative, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they were very helpful to me, right right from the get-go, you know. I, maybe a little begrudgingly. I like to, I like to tease them about that. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, they were very encouraged. It's, it's just pizza. It's not a big deal, Paul. They don't, you know, it's like I'm asking all these questions because they had the exact same oven and the exact same dough mixer I was going to get. And, and, you know, I went to them and I, you know, I asked them if I could work with them there. And eh, I don't think they wanted me, but they let me come whenever I wanted and ask questions. And they were extremely helpful. They really were. So, um, so that's where, you know, a lot of that knowledge came from. You hadn't opened your place, so you didn't know if that it was going to be in Brooklyn. They didn't know where you, where you were going to open. Maybe. Oh, at that time, I didn't know it was going to be in Brooklyn. I didn't did. know that. I had signed a lease and, and the place in Greenpoint, and I knew that at that time. Oh, so oh, so uh, you know, Brooklyn is is far enough away from Hoboken that you should have been shouldn't have been too threatening to them. It sounds like they they, oh, they were they were in Hope Well, which is a lot further. Oh, it's oh, like, Hope it's well. in okay. the middle of nowhere. Okay. okay. They did well, though. They did well. The place was a little small. They wound up uh, in another place in Princeton that's beautiful, and they opened up a place, I think two places in Philly, one a Roman place. So, But, yeah, no, they, they didn't feel threatened in that regard. You know? Yeah. If, if they had plans to open up in New York, you know, they didn't tell me. Well, that, that's where I think it's, uh, you know, this whole idea of uh, the, the pizza community being pretty generous. And, I mean, there's plenty of room for good, good operations. There's never too many pizzerias. There's 
there's business for everybody if you can do it well. Well, you know, and that's, you know, I, I've always made a point of uh, supporting other people. I, uh, you, you can look at me today. I got to get this thing off my screen. Hang on. There's a, there's a Facebook notification on my screen. Here, close. <laughs> So yeah, this is, the, this is this, now the that we're, I'm we're wearing. Made, we had all these these other things to deal with. One thing I always do is um, when I when I'm at Paulie G's, I always wear other people's pizza hats. I pay tribute to them. I never wear nobody in Paulie who works at Paulie G's can wear Paulie G's gear. Okay, you just you pay if you want to wear some pizza stuff, pay tribute to somebody else. Today I'm wearing um, a Juliana's hat. And you notice the hat, the shirt, right? They always match. Not only that, the coffee mug always matches. Okay, we have a little Mike's Hot Honey. Act. Well, I really want to talk about Mike's Hot Honey because you were really, the, I think, one of the guys that helped Mike launch what has now become a major brand in the pizza well, it, world. It was, it, was, um, it was reciprocal because people love that Hellboy pie. And um, to this day, I, I, I serve twice as many of those as any other pie. Well, we're going to have Mike on on Pizza Talk uh, in a, in a couple of sessions after this one, uh, and we're going to, and we're doing an interview with him, a written interview with him as well, because we want to hear the whole Mike's Hot Honey story. I, I think he, that's going to be a, a great he, interview. And just yeah, to make a perfect interview. example, just to make a per, I, I I did this right, but to make a perfect example, um, I, I am so indebted, and, and and Mike's Hot Honey is so much a part of what we've been doing for nine and a half to ten years um, yeah. there's a hat that matches this perfectly as spikes hat honey but i feel that if i wear it it would be too self-promotional so i don't do that the coffee mug we can you know we can. Yeah. well it's it's nice that i mean first of all uh the fact that you were able to help him launch his product and and hit what he what you're doing with the honey you have established a style of pizza that now when i go to these pizza competitions and i see you know, people entering in the, uh, what would you call it, the uh, the everything goes category. You're seeing, you know, hot honey on almost every yeah, pizza. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing that that's caught on so, you know, so much. But yeah. um, what, what was I going to say about well, that? Well, we I were just know. talking about sort of the, 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 the journey itself and how you were getting your after those guys. Uh, and Hopewell got you up oh, and Oh, the pizza, the pizza and... and, and um, Supporting Mike, you know, I learned this. I hope you're gonna have Chris Bianco on. He's plays coming on soon, and we we've been talking about him in, in our previous episode. We talked about him with uh, Rob DiNapoli, and Rob's gonna bring him back, and we're gonna actually do a, a session with Rob and, and Chris together. Oh, that's great. Well, he is my pizza Yoda. A lot of people are claiming to be people, people calling people pizza Yodas these days. I think you. What? Well, everybody a pizza Yoda. We, we have our own little section of pizza Yoda. pizza Yoda. I'm sorry. And that's Chris, right? Chris, Chris is the Yoda. I had, I, my son and I went. We, we had, my son had just graduated the Air Force Academy, and there was a whole bunch of family members, friends, who went out to see it. And we said, well, we're going to go out. Let, let, let's, let's go to Vegas afterwards and have some parties, right? But I had been dying to get to Chris Bianco's place, right? So I said, Michael, you're going to come with me. We're going to go for the day. We're going to fly from Colorado Springs. Uh, we're going to fly there. We're going to, we're going to eat at Pizzeria Bianco and then fly to Vegas. Well, uh, I tried to get a table. You know, you have to call 30 days in advance. Right. And, you know, within 15 minutes or whatever, it's gone. That's right. So I was, very, I was very disappointed. I talked to Adam Kuban, um, and I asked him if he could help me. He, he got a hold of Ed, and they wrote a letter to Chris um, saying, listen, this guy's coming out. His flight is at eight o'clock. You know, he doesn't want to miss his flight. Can you help him? And um, I didn't even know they wrote this letter, right? All of a sudden, one day I'm sitting at home. My phone rings. I still have to, I have to record him to this day. I have wow. it on my phone. Hey, Paulie, this is Chris Bianco, Phoenix, Arizona, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Uh, we, talk, we must have talked for a half hour. It was amazing, right? But he set it up. He says, look, come. Call me when you get there. You come. We'll, we'll sit and we'll talk before we open, blah, 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 blah. So I called them. You know, we went to In-N-Out first. We didn't eat too much, which I wanted to have an appetite. <laughs> but I had to finally go to In-N-Out. And uh, the pump, he met us. He said, come to my bar next door. And if you've ever been there, I'm sure you have. Uh, he has this really nice house next door that, that's a bar that he used for people to wait for tables because, you know, you have to wait like three hours for a table. Right. 
And, and that's part of the great experience there. You sit outside, you meet other people, you know, you, they have a rope talk where you can drink. But, so we go and we sit in this, this bar and we start talking. He was so generous. He was just so encouraging. And one of the things he said, he said two things that have influenced me for, for the, the next uh, 11 years, right? First of all, I said, Chris, well, what about fresh mozzarella? You make your own fresh mozzarella? You know, was, yeah, Paulie, I do. But you know why? He said, you can't get any good fresh mozzarella out of here. If I was like you, I was in New York. There's 100 guys. He said, just like this. There's 100 guys that can make great fresh mozzarella. You should get it from them, support them, and they'll support you. Okay, it wasn't about, you know, not, not, you know, not running the truck from Long Island to here and the environment's going to blow up. It was yeah. about supporting other people in the community. And when I opened, I started looking for people whose products that I could feature on my pizza. The first one was a, a, it was a bacon marmalade recipe some guy had made. And, and we did that. And when Mike came to me, you know, he said that, you know, first of all, he just said that he wanted to volunteer to be a pizza maker, be an apprentice. You know, nothing about Mike's Hot Honey came up until right. I was walking away after we set it up. I said, you come at 4 o'clock on Wednesday, my son. We'll teach you how to stretch the dough. Oh, I'm going to bring my condiment with me. So that's how the whole thing started. You know. Very uh, well, This is a good place for us to take a little break because, uh, number one, I want to hear the other piece of advice that Chris Bianco gave you. And uh, we're going to take a break right now. We're going to, we're going to uh, have a whole new, new round because, you know, with, in the Zoom world, you only get about, you know, so much time before they, they cut you off. So we're going to reload. We're going to come back with another episode of Pizza of Talk with, uh, Paulie G, and we're going to continue hearing more about Chris Bianco. Hey, do you still have that that message from Chris? Can you play that for us? I can. I'm pretty sure I can. Right. How about if we play that when we come back? Okay. Sounds this good. this is my best. Talk. I, no, I can't do. Uh, I'll figure out that way to do. If it. you so can. I'm Peter Reinhardt. We're going to come back with Paulie G on our next uh, on our next round, our next episode of Pizza Talk, and uh, and join us then, Peter Reinhardt on Pizza Talk, presented by Pizza Quest. See you soon. We got it on tape. We got it on tape. And what we what what what's going on right now is that I'm sitting here with Paulie G. This is Pizza Talk, uh, presented by Pizza Quest. And this is uh, round two of uh, a sit down with with Paulie G. He's in Brooklyn. I'm in North Carolina. Uh, we were just hearing the, a snippet of the phone call that Chris Bianco uh, left on on Paulie's uh, voicemail. This is what like 10, 12 years ago that in a way was kind of part of the launching pad for, for Paul E.G.'s uh, pizzeria, right? 11 years ago, May of 2009. And, and uh, we, what we were talking about in, our, the last, uh, in the last episode was the influence of a lot of different people who helped Paul e kind of get his vision off the ground. And when Chris Bianco, who was one of his heroes and, and uh, really a role model for so many people in the sort of new generation of pizza makers reached out and said, uh, hey, anything I can do to help you, that was a, a validation and a kickoff for you, I think, to, uh, to get you going to the next round. Absolutely. The, and when we went there, we sat in his bar, uh, my son and I, for about an hour. He, he gave me all kinds of encouragement and good information. Um, and at the end of it, I didn't remember much because when you drink on an empty stomach, okay, right. the In-N-Out Burger it had already been uh, digested, right? You drink on an empty stomach, you don't remember that much when you're all done, right? But one thing that I do remember is I thanked him. I thanked him profusely. I said, I can't yeah. tell you how much I appreciate this. And all he said to me was, Paulie, don't thank me, just pay it forward. And I never forgot those words. And that led to me whenever people came to me and wanted to know about what it took to open up a place. I, I always make sure that I, I found time to talk with them. And, and you it, did say that, helping other people open too. In the last, uh, in the last episode, you mentioned that he gave you two pieces of advice and one was obviously to pay it forward and to support the people around you. Was there a second piece of advice or was that the second piece? Well, the second piece, the other piece of advice was that, you know, just support people in your local community, but, you know, use their products and you support them that way and they'll support you and you build a stronger community. And, and I did that for, you know, for a long time. Mike's Out Honey was, um, that's how that all started, keeping yeah. that in mind. 
That's a great example. Uh, so, so you got the thing going in Greenpoint was your first location. You now have also a slice shop around the corner, right? So now you're doing slice style pizza. You don't know a whole different setup there, or is it still wood fire or are you using gas? Oh oil? no, it's it's completely different. It's, New York it's style. homage. What happened was we stopped doing takeout because our pizza just doesn't travel well. You put that Neapolitan style pizza that was cooked at a thousand degrees in a box, it doesn't hold up very long at all. Right, right. And I just after a few years, we did it, you know, out of necessity for a while, but I, I felt that I was in a place financially where I could take the hit if I stopped it. And I got that from Chris too. I remember that, you know, you look on Chris's menu, he didn't offer takeout. He, you know, he said it's dine in only. Um, and, and that gave me a green light to feel like, yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I should do that too. Uh, and what happened was there was a kind of an uproar. I don't want to, you know, but people were upset that they couldn't get takeout anymore. Uh, we never did delivery, but, but they were upset about it. And eventually they said, you know what? Maybe, you know, I'm leaving money on the table. Um, maybe there was a slice shop around the corner. I said, maybe I could buy that from the guy. Um, and we'll go from there. And, and, and he said the place was for sale actually when I asked him, but you know, he, he, he messed around with me for a long time. Right. And he, I don't know what was going on, but uh, it wasn't really for sale. So finally I, I told you, I said, look, if you're going to keep doing this, you know, I'm just going to, I have my mindset on this now, right? Right. I'm just going to open up somewhere else. So uh, I found another space. And what it is, is I decided that I was going to make it an homage to the slice shops that I went to growing up, serving that style of pizza. Very simple. Uh, and I was going to have a sports bar in the back. That was a big mistake. I should have never said sports bar because the neighbors thought, you know, they, they thought the wrong thing. Yeah. Uh, turns out that I can't even get people to, people will work for me to put sporting events on the six you know, 65 inch TVs that I had there because they have to put on Jeopardy and Bob Ross and, you know, Twin Peaks. It's like, why did I even bother saying it was going to be a sports bar, right? right? But but you go there and it looks like the 60s. I have some music memorabilia up in the front. The back is all Yankee memorabilia. If you're a Met fan and you like my pizza, you'll still come. And if, well, you know. let's, let's talk technique for a second. So in the Neapolitan place, you're doing you know, classic Neapolitan style pizza with a, a with a wood fired oven and yes, Neapolitan ish, by the way. Inspired, by, I break the rules. I break. The, I wasn't going to have anybody tell me how I was supposed to make my pizza, but yes, exactly. And that's kind of again in the in the Crispianco uh, mode of creating it out of your own vision, uh, starting from a from an idea and then doing it your own way. Uh, how is that playing out with the slice shop? Is it a totally different flour, a different uh, absolutely, absolutely. We use um, we're using red rose flour right now from Central Milling. It's just it's a classic New York slice. It's nothing fancy. It's the stuff that you would have gotten in the '60s. I have a regular slice, um, pepperoni, uh, sausage. We have a white pie. No, no, no regatta on that white pie. Okay. Why? Right. A little little aged mutts, a little fresh mutts, uh, Romano, and a little, little, actually we don't even put the olive oil on. Is it a 16 inch pie that you're making or 18 inch? 20 inch. We're doing 20 inch there. 20, because the slices are pretty substantial. Right. We're selling slices. What and, is the slice? um, but the like, other thing we have, we sell Sicilian slices as well. Okay. We have, ve we have uh, a vegan slice from Vidalia onions that's kind of an homage to the uh, Spinchone from Sicily, uh, except for no anchovies, of course. Um, but the one thing that I did, there was a place in, in Whitestone, Queens, called, there still is, called Freddy's. And they put sesame seeds on the bottom of their Sicilian. I love that. Oh. And all of our Sicilians have the sesame seeds. If, if, if you're allergic, I apologize, but you have to go with a regular slice. So it's all very classic, except for Mike's Hot Honey. We put Mike's Hot Honey on a few of our, our pies. Do you put it out on the table, too, for people that want to just add it to them? No, no, no. They got to buy that, OK? <laughs> they got to buy that. I know, because Mike sent me some packets. He said, you know, we're, we're making packets now for people who want to just squeeze it on. Oh, the, uh, packets are great. Actually, that's what we send out when we have pies to go. We give them packets so that, you know, because especially if you cut the pie, if you put that honey on there, by the time that pie gets where it goes, it's going to leak through the through the cracks between the slices. Right. It's a mess. So, so that's with, the, with the slice shop, then you can do pizza to go. And I'm guessing that 
right now, that's probably a good thing. Are you in, are you open now in this? In this yes, it's keeping, it's, it's keeping us alive, really. The, the wood fire place is completely closed. I wasn't going to do takeout there because, first of all, it probably doesn't travel well. And, and I do have the slice shop where I could serve pizza that does travel well, does reheat well. So I'd be cannibalizing myself. It didn't make sense. I had to take the hit. But that is actually keeping us afloat. Um, we've been very fortunate in that regard. I have, a, I have a great staff of people who, you know, they're very careful with everything, but they're, they're still willing to work and, and feed the community. So we've been feeding, you know, we've been feeding all of the, uh, the hospital workers. We've been doing a lot of that. And it's, you know, we're well, we've been hearing from a lot of pizza operators and, and also from Scott Wiener, who's, who is working with pizza operators to feed the hospital workers. So I imagine that you and right. Scott pizza partnered pandemic. up a little bit. Pizza for Pandemic, I think it's called. We work with them on that. So. Oh, really? Yeah, very interesting. But, but the so, thing was, we're fortunate in that, you know, there are a lot of people, I feel really bad for them. You know, they, have, they had a place that didn't, you know, they didn't do takeout. They weren't used to doing that. They served food. Uh, they don't have a customer base that are used to picking up the phone or going on, you know, going on caviar or something to order. And they, they try, you know, it's like trying to turn an ocean liner, you know, on a dime. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, so how does, it, how does it work for you then if somebody wants to get, you know, just call and, and, and do a curbside pickup, how do they, how do they do it? Do you have uh, people manning the phones and do they have a pickup? Well, we, we, we never, I, I, see, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I don't like to brag about myself, but I'm a very smart guy, okay? <laughs> Because I have no phone that you can call to order a pizza. There's no way I want to trust my, my staff to screw that up, right? You go on Caviar and you order. If you want to, if you want to pick up, you could even, you know, you, we have a takeout button where you could, um, if you don't want delivery and you want to pick it up, you could order it that way. And they come. We have a little window uh, where you could order. We have it all protected. Um, we, we keep people six feet apart. We have markers on the sidewalk and uh, they put their order in or they come to pick it up and we pass it out the front door. We open the door, we pass it out and that's how it works. And, and uh, business is good, it's obviously. At this point, even well, business is not good, but not, it's, 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 it's enough to keep it going. It's, right, it's, it's, almost, it's paying some of our bills. It's not okay. paying all of our bills, but you know. We're waiting for the government to help with that. They help. They helped everybody else. It's time to help us. Okay. For some reason they think that the landlords don't have to lose any money in this deal, even though we're losing our shirts. The banks don't have to lose a dime. I'm waiting for that to straighten out. Yeah. Well, for those who are, are just joining us, we're talking with Paul E. G. Uh, and uh, about two years ago, Paul, we ran an interview that that you did with, where you and I sat down and we we ran it on Pizza Quest. And I advise anyone who's watching this. Go back and and uh, in the interview section, just find the Paul E. G. interview because uh, uh, we have some great photos. First of all, of your pizzas, and, and also on the website, uh, the Paul E. G. website, you can see wonderful photos of of. No, 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 no photos on my website. You don't have photos. No. Well, no. then you then you have to go to Pizza Quest and see them there because yeah. we ran some photos. I mean, there's other there. places to go, but I keep the website very simple. You know where we are. How you know how to order. And uh, well, you know, frequently asked questions like, "Do you have gluten-free options?" Uh, Do you? My answer on that frequently asked question is, "We have soda." Okay. You have soda. <laughs> That's gluten-free. Gotcha. Uh, well, now you also have some other like uh, Pauly G's around the country that are people who are licensed by you, approved by you to open oh, up. Yes, I do. So we're, and we're, that all grew out. That all grew out of uh, Chris Bianco encouraging me to pay it forward. Um, for, for a long time, you know, I, first of all, I, I designed my pizzeria for me to be there. I knew that for it to really run well, I had to be there. Okay. And, and I, and I was resigned to that being it for me. If, if this thing worked out, all I needed was one. I just need to pay my bills. Right. But as things went on and, and we were doing well, I felt I owed, I have some investors. I own about 80, I own 80% of my place. But I, I have friends and family who invested in own twenty percent, and I owned it, I owed it to them, right? Um, and I just felt like I owed it to the, this brand that I created. But um, I knew that I didn't want to, you know, try to open up multiple places. I was not interested in that at all, right? Uh, but I did learn through multi-level marketing, as well as Chris Bianco, that you can help yourself by helping other people. So. 
uh, all along the way, up until that, that, that point, people would come to me, people like Caleb Schiff out in, uh, out in uh, Arizona, in the Flagstaff. Um, there were people from England who came to me, uh, people from Toronto. Um, people from Toronto, I wanted, you know, I, I sent the people who, uh, they want to do slices, I sent them in that direction. Um, but people would come and I, I, you know, I talked to them about what I did and I'd encourage them. Uh, and eventually, uh, you know, I said, I got to do something. So I decided that I would take what I learned and I, I'd make it available to other people, at, you know, at a price. You know, they, they use my brand. They take advantage of my marketing. They could come and, and they could work in my restaurant for as long as they wanted. They could send anybody who worked for them to my restaurant to work there. And, um, and they open up their own place. It's very important that um, it felt like it was theirs. And so they, they did everything from start to finish. They, they went out, they found a real estate. They did all of that. You know, I advised them on that. I, I, I worked with them. Um, and they started out with maybe about, about three quarters of the pies were mine for my, you know, my, my greatest hits. Um, and then they would they would start coming up with their own pies to the point uh, now. And where are some of these places that you're talking about? Um, Baltimore, the place called Apologies Hamden. I we, we always like to to name the place after the neighborhood it's in, not the city it's in. Uh, Apologies Hamden in, in, in Baltimore, uh, Apologies uh, Short North in Columbus, and Apologies um, Logan Square in Chicago. We also had Apologies. In Miami, it was probably just Miami because the neighborhood they were in was called the Upper East Side, and that would just be way too confusing. So, yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, you know, you, you have to pick the right location. Uh, we didn't pick the right location, and sadly, uh, probably just Miami is no I more. It, but the one in Chicago, I know, is is a big hit, and 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 your partner there, and at, at the, I met him at at the expo, and I just blanked out on his name. But he's getting Derek, Derek Tongue. He's great Derek, guy. Yeah, and Derek great is getting guy. a big reputation. In fact, we may want to have Derek come on the show uh, because he's he's becoming his own uh, superstar in his own right. He is. He is, and, and, and I'm very happy that I was able to help him do that. So once uh, one one of your I just wish he'd listen to me once in a while. <laughs> once in a while. That's, that's the football. Well, you you find people who are like you know who have talent and then they want to they got to do it their own way, right? They got to oh, break yeah. them. Oh yeah. You give them your rules and then they got to break them just like you broke the rules that you that you inherited. Yep. So so that means that some of these other Paul G's you're going to find products that may be the creations of the owners of those locations that are things that you're not doing necessarily in Brooklyn. Very much so. Very much so. You know, I, um, I, I would say now less than half of the pies, uh, the original pies that we had, like the Cherry Jones and the, uh, uh, I don't know, we had a whole bunch of stuff. The Cherry <laughs> Jones. Cream uh, Pointer, um, um, the various things. And, and less than, it's less than half now. As a matter of fact, they like to have fun with particularly Derek in Chicago. Um, I had this thing at first. There were a lot of things that I, I did not want on pizza. And they all seemed to start with P, it seemed, right? <laughs> it didn't start with P, I'd make it start with P. For instance, I fell in love, you know, I, uh, there was a pie that I stole from Matthew Palombino at Motorino. It uh, had a hot supersat on it. It was a red pie, hot supersat, palm, uh -huh. red Giano. And he stole it from Michael Ayub at Fornino, right? Right. And, you know, uh, but I, I fell in love with hot supersat, and, and pepperoni didn't seem like a wood fired ingredient. So uh, no pepperoni on pizza, Paul G's, right? It started with that. And it was, I, I, I thought the pesto was a cliche, no pesto. I thought that you de definitely don't want to put pasta on pizza. Uh, you don't want to put chicken on pizza or turkey because it dries out. So no poultry, no, uh, no pickles, right? Uh, no pineapple. So all these peas, right? Yeah. Now all of a sudden, Derek comes out with this pie. You know, I call them the prohibited peas. He comes out with a pie called the Poly Prohibitive, where he puts one of my prohibited ingredients on a pie every month. So <laughs> he's got to do his own thing, man. He's, he's, he's an artist. And they're all doing that. You know who has a great pie? We, we use in the slice shop, we use the Ezo, um, you know, little Roni cups now. Yeah. And um, TJ Gibbs in Columbus make, makes a pie called the uh, um, 
the Joe Pepitoni. Uh, hopefully, some of you people know who Joe Pepitoni is. Yeah, I remember Joe Pepitoni, yeah. I actually have a picture in my slice shop of Joe Pepitone and Coney Allen eating a slice of pizza. Autograph. So. And for those who don't know, we're talking about one of the great Yankees of all time, right? Yes. Baseball player. The only, that's the only baseball players we talk about here. So, um, <laughs> the, uh, but, but TJ, he has a, a lot of great pies, and that pie, that pie is really good. Well, and, that's and very Kelly also, Kelly has come up with some great stuff. And, 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 and the name stuff he goes with, too. He's in Baltimore. He has, you know, the... Um, the Wire was filmed. It was about Baltimore. And one of the main characters was um, Stinger. No. He calls the pie the Stinger Bell. It was, it was something else bell. It sounds like Stinger. Okay. Uh -huh. As a Barry White. It's a white pie. Barry White was from Baltimore. So, so it's more than just the, the, the pies that they. Yeah. Well, that's great because like. they're having fun with it and they're able to be creative. It's not like they're yeah. just, they're not just following uh, a, a, a blueprint or a rule. In fact, you've got, I know you've, you've written uh, in the interview that we did a couple of years ago, we have a list of about 20, I wouldn't call them rules, but they were life lessons that you learned from, you know, along the way that we have listed there. So for folks who are watching this, go and read those rules. I don't know if you can remember any of the ones that you put out. I remember one was, is, is if somebody says, says, I got you, Paulie, I got your back. Oh, yeah. They don't have your back. Right? That's exactly right. They usually say because they didn't have me. Right, right, right. Absolutely. So, so uh, it's been quite a journey for you. And, and, and one of the reasons why I'm glad we're talking about some of the other places is that uh, we were talking about the Yodis, uh, the, the, and, and you, you cited Chris as sort of the Yoda of Yodas. But we've got a little panel going called the, the Pizza Yodis with uh, John Arena and Brian Spangler. And we want to keep adding to that panel. We like to add people like you. And, and one of the criteria, I think, for somebody to be a Yoda is that they really get this idea of passing it forward, of being a mentor to the next generation. So we're not only you know, identifying people who we feel have been mentors and, and influential to the next generation, but we also wanna start identifying some of the up and coming Yodas, the ones who are, who are in sort of in the early stage of their career, but who have that same spirit about them because we're building a more than just a, a series of pizza restaurants around the country it's a community that oh, it absolutely of, is of, you know share of artisans who share a vision and, and i and never i them. never i never say that i'm in a pizza business never i'm in a pizza community it really is a community and uh, it, people are just so generous with their knowledge and, and, and you know it's a great thing it's a great thing and that's really helped me you know i i like to say the best way to compete is not to compete I, I heap praise on people all the time. You come into my restaurant, I send people to other people's pizzerias constantly. I talk about what I like about them. And, and they say, well, well why are you, you know, what, or like the hat, why are you wearing your competitor's hat? You know, and you know, it, it's, it's, it's really worked. Really well, worked. I, yeah, and I think that you get that and, and, and more and more people are getting that. And I think that that's what we want to encourage and foster well, here on Pizza Quest because- they, Make sure also, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm not that sorry. Make sure that you get Vincent Rotolo involved, okay? Because Vincent is, is another one who loves to share information with other people. He came up with a great gluten-free recipe. He spent a lot of time working with Derek in Chicago. Derek wound up wanting, winning a trip to um, Parma to compete. By the way, Food is an art, not a sport. I'm not, a big, I'm not big on the competition thing. I just want to put that out there. But in any case, yeah. he won a trip to Italy, and, and a lot of it was because of the help that he got from Vincent. Vincent is a, uh, is a great guy. Where is Vincent based? Vincent's in Vegas. Where is he Right up now, he's, uh, he's, 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 oh, he's right. in okay, the yeah. Porn Plaza. The Porn Plaza. That's P-A-W-N, <laughs> by the way, in the case some of you guys thinking the wrong thing, guys and girls, okay? Okay, Born yeah, I got was. Um, He's working on another <laughs> spot now, too. I see him. That's where I see him in Vegas at the Pizza Expo over here, and I, and I, I keep forgetting he's actually based right there in Vegas, and, and he is. He's another one of these. He's a, an up-and-coming, you know, superstar. He's a rock star in the pizza world, and uh, we want to get him on. There's a lot, of, uh, a lot of people that we want to get on because, as you say, uh, everyone is sort of part of this one large community. We... We believe Pizza Quest is always about celebrating artisans wherever we find them, not just in the pizza world, but in, in the whole greater community. So we want to get people 
that are doing great work with cheese, with tomatoes, with flour, with, uh, with, with it doesn't even have to be pizza related. It could be beer, wine, uh, anything in life where they bring the same passion and the same sense of sort of the vision of, of searching for something, a meaningful life, uh, which, which is something that, you know, without you having said it directly, is what you keep talking about as you, as you express how your own vision has unfolded. And I really appreciate that about, you know, you and, and you sharing your journey with us. I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I, I was able to navigate my way to doing something that supported myself and my family that, uh, that I truly enjoy. And, and I think I, I do it well because I truly enjoy it. And I want to encourage other people to do that. There's so many people out there that are just going along and, you know, you, you have to step out and, you know, you have to take those chances, you know. It's, and there, well, before, there are people there who will help you. Exactly. And yeah, reach out. And, and when people reach out to you, reach back. Um, before we, we wrap things up, because we want to get you back uh, another time and, and do some more sessions with you, maybe have you join our, our Yoda panel, our Pizza Yodis, and be part of more of a roundtable discussion. But uh, uh, how about a shout out to your wife, Mary Ann? She's been instrumental in the in development of oh, Poly G's, oh, right? Can you, can, well, can well, you tell well, us a little bit about it? She just, you I know. know. She, you know, she, she knew I wanted to do this and she knew we were taking a big risk, but she knew that I wasn't going to be happy if I didn't do it. And, you know, she made it all possible. And, and now, you know, she was working a full-time job for the longest time up until maybe a year and a half ago, I think, I'm not sure. But, um, and she was very helpful um, as, as much as she could be. And, and now, now, now that, you know, she's retired, uh, she's even more helpful, and um, you know, it's just just a lot. It's she's awesome. a very good writer. She's a very if good writer. If she's prepared to go on camera, I, you know, very much. Really? Well, I haven't we'll get her back that. next time. We'll do, well, how about if we do... You haven't seen her writing? <laughs> no, she doesn't look prepared to be on camera. Yeah, next time, we could do that. So. Uh, you know, uh, well, Scott yeah. interviewed okay. her last week. Uh, my internet connection no, is unstable. We're to to yeah, yeah we're, I think what we're going to do is uh, we're going to wrap things up today. We're going to have you come back another time, and uh, we'll continue the never-ending discussion of you know the world of not only pizza but the world beyond pizza with uh, the legendary Paulie G. Paulie, thanks so much for being with us today. <laughs> And uh, folks, thank you for joining us on an honor, Pizza Talk. Really. Uh -oh. It's an honor to be on with such a legend. It's very humbling. Very humbling. It's an honor to be on with such a legend. Thank you. Very humbling. You got it? <laughs> well, right. 